hard disks die. But we want our media and projects to live. But creating archives is boring, confusing, and mostly ignored. What I want to do today is showcase the gear you need to create archives, how to archive a collection of files, and how to find and retrieve a file from tape. The process is easier than you may have thought, and it's a whole lot safer than trusting a hard disk not to fail. So with today, I've got a whole bunch of different hardware to show you. We're going to be showing M-Logic's M-Tape, which is an LTO6 drive, Tolis Group's Argest, which is an LTO5 drive, and I requested LTO5. They've got LTO4, 5, and 6, but I want to demo 5 in this presentation. We're also showing a High Point Technologies Rocket Store 6328, which converts Thunderbolt to Minisas, and I'm showing a MacBook Pro 2013, which is running Yosemite 10105, and you can see from the small white box the specific specs for the computer. The computer does not have to be very powerful to drive tape drives. This happens to be my standard laptop that I use for all of our webinars, 16 gig of RAM and a standard i7 processor. Option two. And in option two, we're going to get everything all in one box. Here I'm going to be demonstrating a Tolis Group Argest desktop cube. You can get it from the tolisgroup.com. It includes an LTO tape drive. They have LTO4, LTO5, and LTO6. They have a High Point Technologies 6328 Thunderbolt expander, brew archiving software, blank tape and cleaning cartridge. In other words, everything you need is in a single package. The LTO5 option, which I'm demonstrating here, is $33.49 when you order it direct from Tolis Group. The LTO6 option is $41.99, again, when you order it direct. And LTO7 pricing is not set yet and will be shipping early next year, probably for about $2,000 more. So let me show you how this option works. Here, I'm going to start a different piece of software called Brew PE. It needs administrative access to your computer, so I'm going to log in as administrator. And again, archiving is dead easy. It opens up in what's called the, the quick configuration, so it doesn't overwhelm you. You can see an advanced view if you're a geek and you want all the controls you need. This has got tons of control. Brew has been around for a long time in our industry. But I'm going to go with quick archive use so I don't scare small children. Grab our media, and we're going to call this backup mm, 25. Now, the tape itself, this is the box right over here. And this is, uh, it's a quiet, subtle color, so you don't, it's easy to overlook when it's sitting on the desk. This is the High Point uh, 6328. What it does is it's got Thunderbolt coming into the back. Let's see if I can move that forward. Thunderbolt coming into the back and uh, a SAS connector. The SAS is what goes to the, the our guest unit itself. There's a second port on the back of that uh, high point. We'll talk about that more in a minute. The tape itself is inside. We can see right there is the tape. I'll lift up the little flap. I've already pushed it in. You just push it in. It sucks it in as you do before. And now we don't need to format because Brew it does not use the LTFS technology. I just simply give this a name, say what I want to back up, hit the tab key, and then Start Archive will light up, and I click Start Archive. And the tape starts humming and whistling. It says, what's there? And let's listen to the, the drive. You can hear how noisy it is. It is not real noisy, but you can hear the drive working. OK, it says, now you have a choice. Do you want to overwrite everything that's on this tape, or do you want to append to the end of the tape? This append is really nice, because I can, say, put a couple gigabytes of data on a tape because I need to save it, and I can go add more material to it later. In this case, I'm going to overwrite it, so click Overwrite. And the backup process starts. It's going to start in 30 seconds. I'm going to save us some time and click Start. And now we see a thumb drive showing what's being archived. It's going to take about six minutes. And we've seen that the backups are done. We were about two and a half minutes into the backup process. And it's starting the verification process. You can hear the drive backing itself up to get to the beginning of the tape so it can verify that the files that are laid down on the tape are accurate. One of the things that a tape drive does is that it can't record in the middle. 
it can only record at the end where there's nothing else. There's, you can't push stuff down. The idea of an insert edit doesn't exist. If a file for any reason is not copied properly, or if you add anything to the tape, it's always added at the end of all existing material. So this is one of the, the benefits that tape has, is that whenever something is laid down, nothing else is ever laid on top of it, or the order change. It's always just appending to the back end. The disadvantages is that you're always shuttling back and forth inside the tape. And for those of you who remember beta tapes and DigiBeta and Beta SP, or even DV tapes, you know that the speed of shuttling from one point of a tape to another is always time consuming because it's not instantaneous. And I'm reminded as I work with these tape backups of, of all DigiBeta gear as we put the tape in and shuttle. In fact, that's exactly what the retrieve process is doing. It says, what tape are you on? What's the name of the file? What time code do we have to go to? Well, it's here, it's doing, what's the name of the file? What tape is it on and what block? structure, what block do we go to on the tape to find it. It's very, very analogous to working with videotape, which is both a good and a bad thing. Good because we understand how it is, but bad because one of the big advantages of going to NLEs is everything's on the hard disk and instantly accessible. This rediscovers the benefits of patience and having a cup of coffee as you're trying to find stuff. And we're pretty much done. There is the note that's saying it's rewinding the tape to the beginning which is wonderful. We'll just wait for that to finish because until the tape gets queued up, I can't find a file to bring it to, to restore it from the tape to the hard disk. And the nice thing is, is that yes, it takes a little bit of time, but I know with absolute certainty that that which is on my hard disk as the master, when it got laid to the tape, is accurate. And when it came back, it's equally accurate because of the verification process that all tape drives use. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Protect Your Stuff, Archiving Hardware and Software. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 183. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.